Hi, Tor Lacey here with a lecture about deserts and desert landforms. Our learning objectives include explain the distribution of deserts on Earth, discuss desert weathering and erosion processes, identify and describe the formation of desert landforms, and describe the evolution of de desert landscapes over time. Warm deserts occur on Earth according to geographic location and circulation of Earth's atmosphere. Warm deserts are distributed reasonably close to the equator, where the angle of incidence of sun's energy is low. The angle of incidence is the angle between the Earth's surface and incoming energy from the sun. When the sun is directly overhead, the angle of incidence is zero. This happens at latitudes near the equator. Think of the sun's energy as an arrow coming directly down perpendicular to the Earth's surface. In contrast, places near the poles have a large angle of incidence, meaning the sun is never very high in the sky, and therefore the energy is not very intense at these locations. Deserts also occur where large-scale atmospheric circulation causes descending air, which warms as it sinks back to Earth's surface, inhibiting cloud formation and in turn uh, inhibiting rainfall. Descending air happens near the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn and in the rain shadow of mountains. On this map, the warm deserts are indicated by the yellow shaded areas for North America, South America, Africa, and Asia, and Australia. In this lecture, the deserts we're going to focus on are those in the southwestern part of North America. This illustration here summarizes the rain shadow effect, which is very important for the formation of deserts in North America. Moist air coming off the Pacific has to rise up and over mountains. As it does so, the air expands and cools, eventually condensing to form clouds which yield rain. The air then descends over the other side of the mountains. At this time it is dry and it warms as it descends. The result is warm dry air and the formation of an arid landscape known as a desert. Wind erosion is more important in deserts than in other biomes because the lack of vegetation and moisture makes it easier for wind to pick up and remove sediment and soil. However, Streams are still the most important sculptors of the landscape in Earth's arid regions. These streams are typically ephemeral, meaning they only contain water immediately after rain. Rain events are infrequent, but can be intense, with several inches falling during short-lived thunderstorms. This results in large volumes of water running off the nearly barren and impermeable bed bedrock into the previously dry stream channel commonly called arroyos or washes. This can create potentially deadly flash floods, where an arroyo goes from being bone dry to carrying a turbulent flood of water and sediment. These geologically destructive events help erode, erode the steep sided canyons characteristic of many desert landscapes. Let's discuss some other desert landforms. Desert landforms. Let's start with alluvial fans. These are depositional landforms found in arid regions where mountains are growing by tectonic uplift, as is the case throughout the southwestern United States. They form where a straight stream exits its steep, narrow mountain channel and flows out onto the open, relatively flat valley floor. This causes stream flow to abruptly slow and deposit its load of sediment. Because of the climate, this commonly happens during seasonal flash flood events when pulses of sediment are transported and deposited, constructing a fan-shaped pile of alluvium as stream flow shifts laterally from side to side along the mountain front. Here the alluvial fan is highlighted by the dashed white line. There's actually two alluvial fans here that have merged, uh, and this is called a bajada as well. Here we have an illustration, mountains with a straight channel here, the stream exits the mountains and then deposits its load of sediment. 
Over time, this builds up a fan-shaped pile of alluvium. In profile or cross-section view, the fan is pretty gently sloping relative to the steep mountains from which the streams are flowing and then exiting onto the flat valley floor. And then here we have a cross-section as if you were looking at it from the stream channel in the mountains out towards the valley. Cuestas are tilted blocks of bedrock with a steeper and a less steep side. So here we have it in a photograph, less steep and steeper side, and here it is in an illustration, less steep side and steeper side. The less steep side is the top of top bed in a stack of strata or layered rock. This is called the dip slope. The, steep, the steeper side represents a cross-sectional cut through the strata which allows it to hold a steeper slope. Playas are desert lakes, which are dry more often than not. They can be some of the flattest places on the planet. This is why some, like the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah, have been used as the location for setting land speed records. Sand dunes are the most prominent landforms constructed by wind deposition. Like sediment deposited in stream channels, sand on sand dunes will continue to move so long as there is wind and a lack of vegetation to anchor the sediment. Sand grains roll and skip up the windward side of the dune and are redeposited on the leeward side. This forms the cross bedding characteristic of wind deposited sediment. When the leeward side exceeds the angle of repose for sand, it fails as a sand slump. Different types of dunes form based on the availability of sand and the direction or directions of the wind. The Great Basin Desert is the largest of the four deserts in North America. It's located in the rain shadow of several mountain ranges, including the Sierra Nevada Mountains here in California. Due to the combination of its geologic history and its climate, it shows the different stages of desert landscape evolution and provides excellent examples of typical desert landforms. Over the past 16 million years, this region has experienced intense crustal extension as tensional tectonic stresses have stretched the crust to about twice its original width. This has resulted in the formation of a repeated series of wide valleys, also called basins, separated by mountain ranges, giving this desert its geologic name, the Basin and Range. This illustration here is a simplified summary of the evolution of a desert landscape. Stage 1. Faulting produces mountains and valleys. Alluvial fans grow. Stage 2. Tectonic uplift slows. Alluvial fans develop into bajadas mountains become more subdued. Stage three, tectonic, tectonic uplift slows or ceases altogether. Mountain front eroded to form pediment. Mountain peaks have been eroded down to isolated rock islands called inselbergs. Let's look at some real life examples of each stage in the evolution of a desert landscape. So here we are in Death Valley. This is a stage one, maybe transitioning to stage two. We have tall mountains that are actively growing and then alluvial fans forming at the base of these mountains. Stage two, the mountains are being eroded down and have a more subdued look to them. The alluvial fans have grown and merged together to form large bajadas. In stage three, the mountains have been worn down and worn back to form pediments. The lighter colored surface here is the bedrock that has been worn down flat leading up to the old mountain front. And in this photograph here, we have examples of inselbergs, which are just the remnants of what used to be tall mountain peaks. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you for listening.